welcome to blog number 64, Me Learning to Play the Melodeon. And it's been a pretty long time since I've done one of these. I think I did my last one back in May when I first got this Dino Buffetti Binci, the second of these that I've had. Since that time I've had it uh, Dedic tuned uh, by Martin White and um, I've been using it for Morris and I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I've actually been playing for over six and a half years now, though really it's four and a half because I had a couple of years off while I uh, pursued different uh, musical projects. But anyway, um, the reason for doing this blog today is to show off this uh, tuning of this box and also to talk about this fine tune, Wildwood Flower. Somebody requested this tune, it's the old Carter family thing. I've already played it on the banjo and on the cigar box guitar on YouTube. This is the first time I've done it uh, on the box. Um, I've got music for the DG that I've just played it on and um, so I'll just talk about that a little bit. I hadn't realised before, and I feel a bit silly because it's a fairly obvious thing, you can do this almost like a piano accordion bass. You can do, uh, when you're playing on a G chord, you can play G bass, G chord, then you can play D bass, G chord, all in the same direction, all on the push. So you can get that first and fifth type of bass, which is quite nice. And I've used that quite a lot in this. And I've also uh, done this thing, thing on the end where I go. Where I do G bass, uh, D bass, B bass, D bass, G bass, D bass. And end on a G bass and a G chord together. Also, I'm starting to put a little asterisk on the C basses if they're on the push. Because mostly they're on the pull, aren't they? So now if there's a C bass note or C chord on the push, I put an asterisk by the side of it. You can find this music on my website and I've also put it on Melnet as well. So there it is played in the key of G on a DG Melodeon. Right, I'm going to play it on this uh, one row in C. Um, I used to own this box and I've sold it, but I very luckily uh, managed to borrow it back from my good friend Kathy to do this video. So thank you, Kathy. And um, so I'm going to be playing this in the key of C. Can't do all the fancy basses. Um, Let's have a listen to what it sounds like. So it sounds nice in the key of C, I think. Um, um, I start off in position at home and my first finger's on the, the root note. Now all of that is just using um, C chord, G chord. So I move down one to what I call position plus one. So my little finger can reach this E. Now for the first time, I use the F bass F chord. And of course it's nice because you get it on the pull and the push. And I go back into the original position. When I started having a look at this this morning, I didn't have this box, so I thought, how can I do this in C? And so I thought, I know, I'll use my GCF box, and I'll show you what I came up with uh, on that one. So this is a GCF box, three row box. Um, I'm using the middle row C to play this. I'm pretending it's just got C, C bass, C chord, and G bass and G chord. I'm ignoring all the other basses, just like it was um, a sort of a spoon bass type of um, one row in C. So let's see what we come up with. I've had to sort of trim it down a bit, obviously, and you get the what I call the, the Morris bodge. <laughs> 
towards the latter part. few bodges there um, so obviously if I was playing a, um, a one row in C with spoon basses only with C and G basses when it gets to the bit that goes obviously I'm playing a G bass there and that's not right it should be an F bass it's what I call a sort of a Morris bodge but yeah you know, if I only had those two basses I'd have no choice got the notes I need on the uh, inside row, the, the F row, and the, the basses. I've got an F bass down here so I could go. So I could do it there. Um, very awkward on this because the bellows keep uh, closing up, they, they leak, but uh, you get the idea. I wonder if I can do it on my ADG, that one doesn't leak, and I'll do it uh, in the key of D. So obviously I'm playing in the key of D there. Um, mainly on the D row, found those notes that I needed towards the end uh, on the G row and of course came down here for the required bass note and bass chord. Finally I'm just going to go back to my uh, buffetti and I'm just going to play in D on the D row. just about exhausted all the possibilities there in the various keys on the various melodians. One thing I have uh, learned to do quite a lot lately is to learn tunes by ear. I've started playing for the men's side uh, with Charles of Morris. I've been playing for the ladies for the last year, got asked to play for the men and uh, it's Cotswold Morris. If you're a, a Cotswold Morris person you'll know um, that's a very specific way of playing the melodian and uh, I found it an interesting thing to do to learn the tunes by ear and I have been writing them out as well you know in dots but uh just picking them up and feeling my way finding my way around it uh, very very useful um I think a lot of people think it's a bit weird that I you know have music I don't use the music when I go out obviously when we go out dancing but uh, I like to learn from the music make sure I've got it right got the fingers right and then of course I leave the music behind when I go out and just uh just play from muscle memory. So anyway, that's the end of this blog. I hope very much you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.